Hello, my surplus addicts. So, today we will be looking at the second part of my Soviet Afghan war collection. Now, I'm a little informal today. Uh, that's because it's so hot. I'm not. I'm not getting all dressed up right now. But uh, today we'll be looking at the M69 or OBR69 uniform. Now, it's missing some features such as the collar liner, as well as some uh, insignia here and there, but that's beside the point, you know. What you just need to see is the base of the uniform, what you can expect from it. And we'll also be looking at some uh, other assorted pieces of gear here, such as the Sidor Haversack or the Veshmashok, and the uh, SSH-40 helmet, as well as the standard cold weather or standard issue garrison canteen. The uh, combat engineer's uh, bag, and of course the shovel. So, where do we begin? Well, for right now, let's begin with the M69. Right now, we have the blouse here, which, if you can see it properly, which I'll bring it up closer to the camera here shortly. You'll see that it's a very almost World War II inspired blouse. It ain't, it ain't really got any of the extra pockets or BDU design of the, uh, uh, of the Afghanka, which I believe is the OBR-88. Uh, I'll have to look it up, but uh, let me go ahead and get this opened up for you. And we'll take and I'll bring you a closer look on the inside of the uniform to see if it's got any of the inside pockets or... Uh, any of the extra features of the uh, Afghanka. Well, already there are some interesting inside features. Let me bring this closer. So, in this breast, you have an inside pocket, which is actually really good for... feels like you can hold a wallet or a phone. You also have one on the other side, much like the OBR-88 or Afghanka. And uh, the pockets, interestingly, are actually um, on the inside of the blouse. As you can see, they're, they have no outside stitching. They're on the inside, much like the uh, Chinese uniforms, which, again, I've always held the belief that uh, Soviet and Chinese uniforms share, share a little bit of design philosophy. So, overall, it's also got a hanger right here on the top. The buttons actually have the hammer and sickle and the star so you know really nice soviet aesthetic and of course you can see i've got a uh a veda vet patch here on the sleeve and there are also brass or gold buttons on the uh on the wrist as well so more or less it's a very it's a very cut and dry uniform but one that definitely has a beautiful soviet aesthetic to it now, as you can see, there's also stuff here for where the emblems go, especially uh, also here on the shoulders. So really, it's a very bare-boned blouse, but one nonetheless that has a very interesting design to it. Now, we're going to move on to the, uh, the trousers. Here we go. Now, as you can see with the trousers... They have the typical boot tie-offs down here, or not tie-offs, but, you know, um, the things that go underneath your feet to help you get them in the boots. They also have an interesting shape to them, actually. It looks like they kind of conform to the shape of the foot instead of just being a straight cut. Now, of course, they have no back pockets, which typical of Soviet Chinese design, as well as Warsaw Pact, I believe. <laughs> They also have waist adjusters right up here around the waist so you can make it smaller or loosen it if need be. Now, this one also seems to have an interesting little pocket right here. I'm not sure what that's for, but uh, that's something to keep in mind. Now, with the knees here, you can see there's some kind of reinforcement or pleating. I'm, I'm not sure what those are for, but uh, it, it definitely adds to the aesthetic of the trousers. So, it's also a button-up fly. It also has a little metal thing here. That's just the mail going by, if you can hear that. So, obviously, it's a very bare-bones uniform. And 
there's a reason it eventually got replaced in service in Afghanistan. The soldiers needed more features to be combat ready, and this uniform was so stuck in the uh, in the past that many troops felt they needed a uh, an upgrade. Obviously, I'm very certain of it. So, with that, let's move on to the items we have down here. First of all, let's look at the Siegel Haversack, or the Veshmashok. I've heard it said several different ways. Now, as you can see, it looks like a giant potato sack assault pack, is what I call it, with a, with a pocket and some straps. It's also got stuff here on the side where I believe you can put a great coat or a uh, plush palatka. Now, in fact, uh, I have a plush palatka on the inside and the back. It helps kind of keep the stuff from wearing on your back if you have the plush palatka folded up and actually conforming to the back. So really, not much, not too much to this pack. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there where they'll show you um, how to cl uh, open it, close it, which I guess I can do a, a quick demonstration real quick for you. Now, this is one that I had to look up myself. Uh, it's a very complicated thing, first time go for Westerners. <laughs> but basically, you have your straps at the bottom, obviously. Let me get these straightened up. I like to keep these kind of in order. So, there you go. You got it all straightened out. So, what you do is you put your hand through it, you grab here, and you take the loop on the top and you pull your hand through. And there you go. You got your little noose here. So you put your hand back through. Now obviously it's gonna open up a little bit, so what I do is I take the top, I kind of fold it a little bit into a, into a knot, and then I take the rope and I tie it around. And uh, then I put my hand on top, bring this over, and then you pull. Now, as you can see, voila, it's closed. Now, you're probably wondering, well, is that kind of hard to uh, deal with if you're out in the field? Well, let me show you a little bit of a, a cheat for that. You undo it, and you take your hand, put it through the loop, and you, uh, you open up the bag, and uh, you grab it out, out whatever you need. I got a few meals in here. I've also got a camel wool balaclava, which was the type of balaclava that was worn in Afghanistan. And I believe I also got some gloves, some water in here. Yep, got some gloves. And uh, really, that's about it. There's also the uh, the mess kit. Can't remember what I got in there. Probably some food stuffs, but uh, really, that's uh, that's about it for that. Let me go ahead and put this stuff back in, in case I'm out in the field again in the future. It would uh, be nice to keep this packed. Now, this type of bag was used since uh, World War II, and if I'm not mistaken, it has its origins in uh, World War One. It's a very old design that pretty much, like all things Soviet, was recycled and has seen combat time and time again. So, with that, let's move on to the helmet. So, as you see, SSH-40, pretty, uh, pretty standard helmet. Uh, got the typical Soviet shape, design, color, everything. Now, how you can tell this is an SSH-40, for one thing, is this the liner. It's got leather on the inside of the liner, and it's got this canvas chin strap. So that's an SSH-40 design. You know, the uh, SSH-60 and 68 use leather chin straps, if I'm not mistaken, as well as their shapes a little more, I think, conical, and they have more of these, I believe, these little rivets. So really not much to say there. Now, let's get to the canteen. Now, much like the other canteen you've seen in my previous video, I wouldn't recommend really drinking out of this too much. Now, it, uh, it uses aluminum, and it attaches to the belt via this. Now, it's not really something I would take on and off too frequently, as more or less it's just going to slip off, so the pouch ain't going to stay up. I mean, you could probably sew it, and it'd probably be fine, but uh, 
here's what the canteen looks like outside of the pouch. As you can see, it's kind of dented up. It's a, I got this from a website called collectrussia.com. They're based in New Jersey. Really nice people. Uh, I don't know if you can see in there, but uh, it's aluminum. Oh, for the most part, it's pretty clean, but uh, I wasn't sure if the paint was uh, lead, and obviously I messaged the company to ask before I drank out of it any further, and their response is pretty much just, hey, we sell these novelty novelties only. Please don't drink out of them. So pretty much that's about where you're at with that. It's also got an adjuster here on the side. I guess you can tighten it up if you want to keep it in the pouch if it's cold or something of that nature. It uses a chain, obviously, to... Uh, keep the cap secured to the canteen so with that let's move on to the engineer's bag now it uses leather on the side to keep it together and uh let me see if i can remember how to take this apart here we go it's a leather holder right here a lot of this has leather holders and uh it comes apart like that it's got a strap you can adjust in different ways. I can't remember how it came in the package. I remember redoing it. But you can uh, put it across your chest like this. You can use it as a belt. Uh, you can always carry it folded to the side. But this is the engineer bag. Now, I don't have anything really in here, but I'll go ahead and I'll show you what the main compartment looks like. Now, I actually got this from a salesman in Kazakhstan. Uh, really good guy. Uh, he also sold me the boots, too. But as you see, it's got compartments where uh, you have many different items that come with the bag. I'm not sure what this is offhand. Now, I remember asking a buddy of mine when I was trying to do an uh, engineer impression, did they have gloves? He said no. Apparently, these guys just do it barehanded. <laughs> Soviet Russia, am I right? So, that's the main compartment. Uh, I guess I can go ahead and show you one of the smaller ones. It's pretty much just just a box. That's it, just a box. It's got no ventilation holes on the bottom or anything, you know, for drainage or whatever. So pretty bare bones design, and uh, that's pretty much just it for that. I mean, if I had more of the kit in there, I'd go ahead and uh, show you some more of the features, but uh, this is how the box came, so there's really not much going on there. Now, lastly, we have the shovel. Now, this originally was a civilian shovel with a civilian cover, but I bought a military cover to go over it. It might be military grade. Yeah, as all things in the Soviet Union, it's very utilitarian. So let me go ahead, take this out. That's your standard shovel. Uh, it actually works pretty good in the yard. Uh, it makes a great gardening spade, really. Um, and as you see, there's your cover. It's got belt stuff on the back, so you can put it on your uh, web gear. A uh, pretty, pretty simple thing, really. I mean, there's not much to it. I mean, <laughs> I usually put the curved edge towards the belt. That way, it kind of conforms to my body a little more, in theory. And uh, it's kind of difficult to uh, take it on, put it on and off, whatever, when it's on you. You know, like, like all things Soviet, it's very simple, but has a certain amount of, you just got to get used to it kind of thing to it. So, that's the shovel. It makes great for smacking or, you know, like I said, garden work, whatever you're going to use it for. Then, of course, I got the garrison cap on my head. I'll show you what that looks like. So, there's a close-up of the standard garrison cap. That's a little lighter than the actual OBR-69. Uh, but it gives you an idea of what it looks like on the inside. Uh, it's got that typical leather synthetic uh, sweatband or head conformer, where you want to call it. So, pretty nice looking cap. Uh, overall, that'll do it for our video. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And uh, I'll be glad to share more of this equipment as I get it in with all of you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. So, uh, like I said, please like and subscribe. And uh, you have a good day, my surplus addicts.